I'm Dan Milliken. This is my Cessna Centurion 210, the pickup truck of the skies. This is a turbocharged Cessna 210, fully IFR with known icing capabilities, which means it has a heated prop, boots on the wings, and a heated windshield. I run a company called Serendipitous Films, and we do uh, feature films, TV, a lot of corporate and commercial videos and film uh, projects. So back when the drone craze started, about five, six years ago, it was the Wild West. And the FAA was way behind the curve on, on it. The technology really caught them by surprise. You had to have a commercial pilot's license in order to do drone work outside for pay. And while well, that's unenforceable, nobody can do that. As a stopgap measure, they said, okay, look, We'll exempt you from the commercial requirement if you get any kind of pilot's license and apply for the exemption. I had always wanted to fly. I'd always wanted to, uh, to become a pilot. So that was my excuse. I went, I got my private, I got my 333 exemption and was one of the few production companies at that time that was legal to charge for drone work. Now, since then, of course, the FAA has created the, the, the drone license, the 107. So uh, the 333 is now obsolete. But I've flown so much that I actually qualified for my commercial and I passed my check ride a few months ago and so I'm a commercial pilot. I started looking at what I would need a plane for. I'm the type of person, I have to have a purpose. I can't just buy a plane because it's fun to fly around on the weekends. The purpose that I would use an airplane for would be flying to shoots with my, uh, my film crew. I need to carry three to four people, film gear. I'd like it to be somewhat fast. The useful needed to be at least 14, preferably 1,500 pounds. The only thing that fits is the Cessna 210. The Bonanza, Piper 6 seat version, none of those had the payload that this guy carries. Uh, it became real quick a one plane search. And then it became a question of do you want the turbo? Do you want the, the STC for the 550 engine? Well, I need the, the fly into known ice. I need um, some of that kind of stuff. So turbo, even though I live in Texas, I, I enjoy flying at the higher altitude so I can catch that uh, the favorable winds. So we looked at a couple of planes. We just missed out on a 550 conversion, which would have taken the turbo out. And then we found this plane in California. So that's how we found the bird. We flew to California and we brought her home. What I really like about the airplane is it could haul 1,500 pounds. It's turbo, it has flight into known icing. It has the hot windshield and, and that's come in handy a couple of times. You know, it has landing retractable gear, which is important for getting that airspeed up. And that's the difference between the 206 and the 210. A downside, you know, with the turbo, you've got the issues of higher maintenance. It's been a real hassle these days to try to get ox my onboard oxygen tank filled up. Uh, parts are a lot more expensive on the older planes. Parts are still plentiful, they're just expensive. So those are some of the downsides of it. But uh, I'll tell you, I call this the pickup truck of the skies and I love it. On this plane, when I'm going cross country, I usually fly it indicated like 135 or so and true airspeed may be at 150 to 160 knots. We'll be fuel flowing 15, uh, 14 or 15 gallons per hour. Um, there are times on cross country I can get down to 10.8. Serendipitous Films, we specialize in doing uh, marketing and training videos for the corporate world, from healthcare to aviation to uh, the energy and oil field sectors. I do a substantial amount of TV, reality show, producing, directing, as well as I've done five feature films. Our website is S as in Sierra-films.com. Uh, six months ago, I thought, well, you know, I'm flying for business. I'm a filmmaker. I'll start throwing my cameras on the plane and start doing a YouTube channel. And so I started doing that and it's called Taking Off. YouTube.com slash Taking Off is our channel. And we've got our flying videos. And then recently uh, in a day, I shot out 14 studio uh, shoots we call In the Hangar where we're talking to all about general aviation. So we talk to ATC people, we talk to mechanics, AMPs, and talk about what, as a pilot owner, what I need to be aware of for to keep those maintenance costs down. All right, anything else you wanna add? No, let's go flying. All right, let's do it. The plan for the day was to head north out of Hicks Field up to Bridgeport to fill up with inexpensive fuel and then back to Hicks. Yeah, started right up. All right, test test. Got you loud and clear. You too. All right, good. Just to brief our flight, it's gonna be a short flight. We're gonna go up to Bridgeport because the uh, the FBO here doesn't care about the uh, general aviation community and charges out the nose for fuel. So we go to Bridgeport where they love general aviation. Just fuel up there and then come back? Fuel up there and come How back. How far a flight is that? Uh, 15 minutes, okay. not far at all.
So a lot of these uh, hangars here have uh, homes in them? Uh, apartments in them, yeah. yeah. That's pretty neat. I think about, I've heard like 30% of these people live in, like the guy that came and talked to us as we were pulling the plane out, he this lives next door with his family. Okay. Now, people aren't supposed to park there, and it drives me crazy. Yeah. And this is not, I don't have room, you know? Especially when I come the other way and I got that radar pod. Yeah. If I was a low wing, that wouldn't work at all. Yeah. Uh, Hicks that has no instrument approaches. They've got some stuff out of like a hangar right here on the threshold that. Uh, oh really? Messes up any FAA approach. Well, I mean, I, the RNAV approaches are getting pretty low now. I think. Uh, I kill. Well, I've had to on two different times. I've had to d divert to uh, meet him on coming back from cross countries. Leak. Vacuum is uh, positive. Okay. Okay, trim is set. Morgan 1200. Radios are set, navigation set. Hicks traffic, Centurion 4620, Yankee. We're going to take the active 1-4 for a west departure, Hicks. I'm going to look again, nobody coming. The runway is clear, nobody coming the opposite way. Here clear. we go. Traffic Centurion 4620 Yankee uh, departing to the west, Hicks. All right, so I'm going to um, do a slow climb here. Bridgeport traffic Centurion 4620 Yankee's eight miles south east. We're inbound, full stop, Bridgeport. Bridgeport traffic Centurion 4620 Yankee's eight miles south east. We're inbound, full stop, Bridgeport. Bridgeport traffic Centurion 4620 Yankee's eight miles now you'll notice one thing. I'm I real big about uh, I'm I'm flying autopilot. Yeah. I I'm, a lot of people again the stick and rudder people like really like to fly it, but for me, you know, I'm a cross country guy, so yeah. I want to be thinking and looking and focusing on other things. Well, no, that's uh, in the corporate world and in, in the airline world, that's the way you do it. I mean, you know, you're yeah, you got to be hands on when it's needed, but you're more of a management system, and, and you know, uh, and and. When you don't have to think about holding straight and level, you can be more paying attention to what's out there and what you're in here, you know, what the airplane's doing. So I, I, I do agree with that. That's good stuff. Okay, we're beating numbers. They're speaking good. Gear coming down. I've got one here, and I've got two on the mirror, and I got a green line. Bridgeport traffic, Centurion 4620 Yankee, left base 18, Bridgeport. Good. Okay, funnel's clear. All right. Bridgeport traffic, Centurion is turning final, 18 Bridgeport. We'll do a full stop.
Yeah, I got gear, gas, undercarriage, mixture, props. And more degrees of flaps. AC off. Airspeed in good, 80s. She floats a lot, by the way. Well done. Okay, flaps in 10, identify flaps. Windows open. Yeah, some... I'm not gonna try to make D. We'll go on down. And AC can come back on. So at Bridgeport Airport, we fueled the airplane, and yes, you can see that's right, $3.89 a gallon, and that's considered cheap. After that, it was a quick flight back to Hicks Airfield. All right, Dan, thanks so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a lot of fun going yeah. up. A great airplane for cross country. I couldn't think of a much better airplane for it. The pickup truck of the skies. There you go. All right, thank you. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Flying Doodles. I keep saying Sailing Doodles. If you haven't checked out Sailing Doodles, please do that. It's my other channel about sailing. But I always love the 210, and it's a pleasure to be able to fly in it today. So if you like what we're doing, want to see more of it, leave a comment down below on what kind of airplane you want to see next. And if you really like it, you can go to patreon.com slash flyingdoodles, and that helps us continue to make these videos.